The RX 7900 XTX GPU launched, and the reviews were not as good as AMD wanted us to believe, which left me wondering, what happened? Let's get into it. AMD provided information to the public showing charts of 1.5 to 1.7 times better performance. They touted their 54% performance per watt improvement, and they provided data on four specific games which averaged out to a 55% improvement. And when I put that information together on a chart to compare with Nvidia, the expectation was that the XTX was going to easily beat the 4080 by 17%, and the XT was going to be just behind the 4080. And in ray tracing performance, the XTX was going to lag the 4080, while the XT was going to lag the 3090 Ti. But that is not what the review showed. In rasterization, we were expecting this, and instead, we got that. The XTX is barely ahead of the 4080, and the XT is barely ahead of the 3090 Ti. And in ray tracing, we were expecting this, and instead, we got that. The XTX is barely ahead of the 3090 Ti, and the XT is barely ahead of the 3080 Ti. So what happened? I looked at a lot of the tech reviewers data and I grabbed data from about eight of those sites to understand what their test data showed in improvements the XTX provided over the 6950, the 6900, the 4080, and the 4090. This chart shows the percentage gains seen in each category. I then took the average of those gains and you can see that the XTX is on average only a 36% improvement over the 6950. That is nowhere near being 50% or more as AMD led us to believe with their published info. The XTX is on average 48% better than the 6900. The XTX is only 5% better than a 4080. And the XTX is 20% behind the 4090. The 4090 is clearly in a class of its own. The results from these sites are very consistent and not one of them came close to AMD's claims. All these reviewers can't be wrong. The XTX is not a significant upgrade over the 6950, but it comes close to being a good upgrade over the 6900. Except, you can get a 6900 for around $600 to $650, so maybe it's not a great value. In fact, the 6900 came back in stock on the AMD store two days after launch for $679, and it was sold out within a couple of hours. Plus, you got two free games. Just for fun, I calculated the gain of the XT over the 6950, and that is on average only a 16% improvement. I have to say, I feel a bit jebated. I published AMD's information in comparison charts, and what they told us did not line up with reality. So I decided to dig deeper and look at the four games they provided data for, from which I based my chart. Here you can see the simple math where the 7900 XT is 30% faster than the 6950 and the XTX is 55% faster. I took those four games and then went out to find other sites that had comparable data and then populated that into another table and without dragging you through all the numbers, you just find that AMD's values for the 6950 tend to be a little lower while the values for the 7900 cards tend to be a little higher. So a smaller number in the denominator with a larger number in the numerator can provide you with that level of discrepancy. But what really grinds me is when AMD published a reviewer's guide and told the reviewers that their own numbers showed a 43% uplift of the XTX over the 6950. Even in this snippet of AMD's reviewer's guide from Wendell at Level 1 Techs, in these 10 games, it shows an average improvement of 42.2%. Only two games came close to 55%. That's Modern Warfare 2 and Cyberpunk. The others were much lower. And the two games in their table don't match the values in the two games in their chart. As for the 54% performance per watt, when you look at the footnote at their website, you find that they are getting more creative than ever before. I mean a test bench with DDR4 7200 RAM? an XTX that is set to 300 watts of power consumption, and measuring FPS in an unknown set of games with unknown settings. You can make up any number you want with that configuration. The launch of RDNA 3 has been something less than flawless. It is showing very odd behavior like we haven't seen before on a launch. Looking back from the time of the announcement to the launch of the GPU, it is clear that AMD has lost credibility. AMD lost trust with the reviewer and enthusiast community. 
which is really sad to see. With this launch, I was hoping AMD was going to debate NVIDIA. Instead, with this launch, AMD debated mainstream tech outlets and the tech community. Strangely enough, there I was on launch day, ready to buy an XTX. I was there when the AMD store went live, and when I was put in line, it told me I had a 33 minute wait time. I thought I was going to have a chance to get one. However, once in the AMD store, the XTX was gone, and only the XT was left. And if you watched my previous videos, you know what I think about the XT. Why was I willing to spend $1,000? I wanted to characterize this card to compare it to previous generations of Radeon flagships. I wanted to understand how this architecture is different and how it scales in terms of core clocks, memory speeds, resolutions, and power consumption. I guess I'll just have to wait. I think what disappoints me most about this launch is that with the reduced performance of the XTX to be similar to the 4080 in rasterization and only at ampere levels in ray tracing, AMD is again just slotting into NVIDIA's pricing structure. Before the launch of the XTX, the RTX 4080 GPUs were sitting on shelves. After the launch of the XTX, the 4080s are now selling and at Newegg becoming one of the best sellers. Make no mistake about it, this 80 series fighter GPU represents a price hike. Just ask yourself the question, in 2015, Fury competed against the GTX 980 at a price of 549. In 2017, the Vega 64 competed against the GTX 1080 at a price of 499. In 2019, Radeon 7 competed against the 2080 at a price of 699. And in 2020, the RX 6800 XT competed against the 3080 at a price of 649. Now here we are at the end of 2022 and the RX 7900 XTX, which AMD said competes directly with the 4080, is priced at $999. The 80 series card from AMD is now more expensive than it has ever been before. And this is after they implemented a chipset technology that is supposed to bring down the cost. With my last video showing how Radeon is just becoming more relevant in the market with its lower than ever market share, they seem to be content to live with whatever leftovers they get from NVIDIA. What do I mean? The AMD fan base is very vocal and emotional, and that stems from the fact that they hate NVIDIA. I mean, hate NVIDIA. NVIDIA, with its predatory ways, pisses off enough people every generation that it guarantees a certain amount of anti-NVIDIA sales, and that goes directly to AMD Radeon. Since NVIDIA will always piss off a certain percentage of the people, AMD is guaranteed a certain amount of sales, no matter how broken the product may be. If it's close enough, then it's good enough. With the XTX being sold out everywhere, it's good enough. Maybe that should be AMD Radeon's new slogan. If it's close enough, then it's good enough. Here's a fun thought experiment. What if Nvidia turned and they didn't price gouge and they offered GPUs at fair prices and even EVGA came back into the fold and all the hate for Nvidia dissipated and the anti-Nvidia base dried up? Who would be left to buy AMD Radeon GPUs? It's clear that AMD is not providing competitive pressure to help bring down the prices of GPUs. And if you are an enthusiast who like to buy 80 series class GPUs or above, welcome to the world of four figure GPUs. Jensen and Lisa look at the enthusiast community no different than they look at a field of cows. You are only something that is to be milked. Two years ago, I was excited that 4K gaming was finally coming to 80 series GPUs and finally be affordable with GPUs under $1,000. Without true competition, that price is going back up this generation to unprecedented levels. And the one thing that no one is talking about, it is going to cost the enthusiast gamer more now than ever before for high resolution gaming and you will lose more money than ever each and every generation. What do I mean? Well, we'll cover that next time. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.